Hello everybody, it's Tony Abbey here. I wanted to introduce you to a new applet I found for creating content, uh, which I'm going to be using in my FEA uh, training classes I run with AFEMS. It's called GeoGebra. It's used by uh, schools, school teachers, and it's uh, virtual classrooms and so on. I'm finding it very rich, very enjoyable. So I thought I'd uh, kind of share that with you. So this is the format. It's part of my um, AFEMS dynamics training class. It's looking at really damping, topic which is very dear to my heart. And at the moment, what we have is just a typical slide. What I've done is create this applet. Now, the applet's uh, just a slide at the moment, but we'll see as we go through. I can set tasks for the, for the attendees. So we're looking at uh, the Rayleigh curve in here with alpha and beta terms. So we can look at the effect of uh, low alpha and high beta, which is stiffness dominated, or high alpha and low beta, which is uh, inertia dominated. And then we can set a couple of target frequencies using these points here with target frequencies and, st and target damping to see if we can get that curve to fit, uh, obviously modifying alpha and beta. And then we can look at the sensitivity of those points and finally look at some of the dangers of actually getting too close to the asymptote in here. So let's fire up the applet. So I click on here, that would go to my website. And there comes the... Uh, the application and that looks uh, good enough so the first thing I want to do is as I said explore what happens if we say you have low alpha and high beta and we can see from the equation that means we've got a stiffness proportional damping that's uh, the terms in the equation just work out that way uh, I've set alpha lower limit of two upper limit high at that value there now we can swap that around let's have alpha high and beta uh, low now you can see the asymptotic type shape we get uh, with um, now the, the uh, inertia uh, dominating terms. So let's now say, well, let's try and find um, a target frequencies. Let's say we've got a frequency around about, say, um, let's say 88 hertz there. And let's move this one in to say about, um, say, 254, something like that. Now I'd like to get them both to be about 2% critical damping. So how do I... How do I do that? Well, I just beat it's coming up nicely on that side. I've gone a little bit high that side on the alpha side. So I just drop that down a little touch there. And I got somewhere close to that. That's kind of good enough. So alpha 18.38, beta, that number. And that's, that's what we can plug in. Now, the importance of kind of understanding what the, the uh, Rayleigh damping curve is, I think is very important because I've known quite a lot of people over the years, and I've done this myself, just get some values from uh, from the literature or somebody tells us some values for alpha and beta, we bang them in. And we've no idea what, what we're doing. Um, we can get the numbers wrong. Um, typically, what we want to have is a lower bound, bound frequency here on, say, A and B, encompassing the, the spread of frequencies we're really interested in. We don't want to be edging too far uh, to, the, to the left here. And we certainly don't want to be extrapolating out. I wouldn't want to put known values in A and B, and then have some unknown low frequencies coming in, because that implies a very, very high uh, level of damping here. In fact, if I kind of move this one down, and say we'd put that value in by mistake, so about, say about 30, 26 hertz by mistake, that's getting a lot of damping. We can just go crazy with that, move that kind of all the way up here. And now I've got 16% um, damping uh, at, uh, say, 9 hertz. So I want to make sure I'm not getting a sort of a cliff edge asymptote effect like that. I got a, like, a nicely kind of balanced set of um, equivalent modal frequencies within this, this nice range here. And I think this tool really helps kind of understand that. So um, the other thing is that look at the sensitivity of beta. Uh, that's very, very sensitive. As I change the, uh, uh, the number here, you can see small changes in beta big changes in, in, the, in the curve there, particularly in the, the damping levels here. So it, it is not, we have to be very careful when we use these values and how we set these values up. I've certainly uh, run into trouble before I set up an analysis where I actually extrapolated out to um, a very high damping level like that. I was running a transient and I spent about two or three days trying to understand why I couldn't get in response out of the transient. My dominant first frequency was completely damped out by this very, it was about 60% critical damping in that particular case. So I think the applet is cool. Uh, what I intend doing is to actually get the attendees to play around 
uh, set some very simple tasks. And then if they want to use it on projects and so on, then they're, they're very welcome to. Again, the link to this uh, straight to the website will be uh, down below. Um, you have to just sign up for a free um, free membership of the website, so there's no big deal there. So I hope you found that useful. I hope maybe you learned something and look forward to more of these GeoGebra type of applications coming up in the future.